the Forty OT podcast. Now, obviously, there is quite a lot of utility in like understanding like the medical literature around certain things. But I, I do also find that the people who are who are the best at, at doing that job mm-hmm. also have a, a, another feed in from lived experience people are like yeah. an ally like they, they they may have this they, these qualifications and stuff but they also they have an input they they, they know someone they've they've understood someone's experiences yeah. and so I, I i wouldn't i wouldn't kind of say that i'm not saying that you're saying it but i wouldn't say that every single professional is you know like didn't know what they're talking about I oh of course I think, yeah but, I think I think I I definitely agree with you. Like, even like I've heard diagnosticians pretty much just palm people off because they made like a slight bit of eye contact during an assessment. Oh my god! Like stuff like that, yeah. you know. Like it's it's pe- people's biases that really I I found get in the way because they they think they know better. Like they yeah. know better than these criteria. And so, exactly. like in my professional opinion, even though I don't there's no reason for me to have this professional opinion i just think this Mm -hmm. this is why you can't have that or this is why you have this or like i think those those types of people those kind of but yeah i wouldn't say self-righteous but just kind of know it know it all kind of people they they definitely cause a lot of issues yeah and i mean like like what you said with professionals like i definitely think there are some amazing professionals out there and i think the amazing professionals are the ones that have a very open mind mm, and they're definitely. willing and o- open to learn from their clients and and they're constantly you know saying i'm i'm constantly learning and and not pretending to already know everything because i yeah. think the professionals that say this is what I studied and these are my nice diplomas lined uh, <laughs> up behind me on the wall behind my desk. And this what... is why you should listen to right, me. Right. These are the professionals that are very, this is the one size fits all. This is how we do it. Like if you fall without of, if you fall out of my like experience with this yeah. illness, then you're too complex, then you're hopeless, right? That was even, for me. I think even like, even though we we constantly see the flaws in the system mm-hmm. like the, the this this knowledge and this you know the the research and stuff that's got us to this point it's still it's still not solving anything right. like like even it's like i could understand if it was a system and everything worked really well we didn't have all of these issues perhaps in the autistic community or around eating disorders but the fact that you know the the sort of the the recovery rates and the sort of outcomes for people are not like really really consistently good yeah kind of points to the fact that they're missing something there like then you know there's still developments to be made and i think any good professional and any good scientist knows that just going towards one study and using that as a representation of what they should do is is bad you've got a you know science is a progressive thing which means that things that we accept to be facts now or things that we know are not always things that continue in the future you know there's studies that disprove them there's you know and so when someone comes up and says some some level of lived lived experience which goes against that or they show certain traits that it you know it is worth actually listening to them and like yes. trying to trying to understand it a bit more for even even just for the sake of making it more person centered and individualized is I think it's really really important. Absolutely, yeah. and I think I think what you just mentioned about having a professional that's maybe seeing something they're not experienced with. I think mm. what mm. will make them a really strong or, or helpful person is by by asking questions and admitting like they don't know everything because yeah. any anyone who ever says like I have all the answers <laughs> like is probably the one who has the least answers because in the yeah. end like and this is yeah. kind of the approach I take with my clients is like I I'm not here to tell you I have the answers to your problems because in fact I have none of the answers to mm-hmm. your problems mm-hmm. but what makes a good coach or a good guide or a good professional is that they know how to ask the right questions because mm-hmm. I believe mm-hmm. that every individual already possesses their own answers within them and they need certain guidance they need to be asked the right questions to to discover those answers within themselves um and that's ultimately how they save themselves and help themselves and And find freedom humans are just so complicated anyway like 
we 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 know very very little about the nature of like consciousness and like how yeah. our brain. We know certain bits in like the in the in the in a certain level of scope and single things, but we don't know how everything connects together completely. We don't know how at what point psychology is different to biology or like you know there's there's so many like gray areas especially when it comes to the human brain because it's so complicated when i was told when i was 15 you're too complex you're just gonna have to accept the fact that you're never gonna get better that was from a professional who in my opinion had a very closed mind because she sure. she believed this is the way we treat people with eating disorders and because you didn't get better within our realm of approach like this is why you're never going to get better. And, I, and I've, I've often, for many years, I wondered why would someone say that to, to someone, right? Because obviously you don't go into the eating disorder field if you really don't care about helping people. And for me, I've come to the conclusion that this is said to people because, I mean, almost all of my clients who have come to me, they've been told the exact same thing, unfortunately. Sure, sure. And, and my conclusion that I've drawn from why they've been told this is because when a professional says that to their client or to their patient and basically says, like, I'm done with you, bye, good luck, they no longer have to deal with the guilt of not have been able to help that person, right? Because they yeah, yeah. then they don't have to admit to the fact that that maybe they missed something or, or they mm. were incapable of so helping. It's, it's not, they're putting lets, the blame onto you rather than it themselves. It lets them off the hook um, mm. because in the end, we don't, we don't want to be held responsible. We don't like to have problems that we don't know how to solve so by saying it's your problem i no longer have to solve this oh yay i'm free <laughs> i don't have, really right so again like amen, i said you're not amenable to the process you know you, yes. you, you're not you're not agreeing with them that this is an eating disorder trait rather than an autistic trait right? yeah so i think that would be the main one is really having an open mind and being willing to listen to people with lived experience and also listen to them and their needs and also providing a sense of trust because again for me personally like one of the biggest reasons why I manipulated the system and didn't listen and didn't do what the professionals told me to do was because there was no sense of trust our entire relationship yeah. was built on this like hierarchical like I'm the professional you're the patient I know what's best you're the sick one right but like yeah. if that's how you're approaching the treatment like you're creating this huge tension gap and and distrust and especially for autistic people that you're just already, waiting for people yeah. to tell you off or like right. say no or like correct you or like <laughs> right and especially about for subjective things yeah, and especially for autistic people that already have so much distrust in the world. I mean, that's why we're so anxious, because <laughs> we don't trust the circumstances. Like, that's why we have our routines, because we don't trust of doing something else. If you're going to take this approach of, like, this is how we do it, like, there's no way you can help this person, Um, because... I, I masked and I lied to my therapist and I lied to my nutritionist and told them just what I thought they wanted to hear. And I would start my mm -hmm. sent mm -hmm. sentence with, I'm just being honest, but I, this is a huge fear food of mine just so that they'd be proud of me and let me get out of treatment early. <laughs> sure, right? Sure. Like, and I'm like, now thinking back, I'm like, that was so, so problematic. Like if they would have just allowed me to express my reality and actually had believed me and actually have been open to the fact that oh maybe this is actually a real thing and maybe she is really different than our neurotypical clients mm -hmm. I think I, I I think my eating disorder never would have gotten as bad as it would have because I would have mm -hmm. felt validated and I would have so felt you, seen so you, you kind of felt like you had to lie to them in order to get on their good side yeah and, rather than, and, and you know, looking back it was having, it was having them admit that the process is not working Right. Yeah, and looking back, all that lying, all that manipulation, it was all masking, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I definitely I definitely relate relate quite a bit on that through my sort of experience through mental health, you know. Like I, I talked about it in the last podcast with or the the one before last, um, with Megan and um it it is really really hard to find a therapist that 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 gets you, and it's it's mm -hmm. really hard to find one that you trust. And all throughout my teenagehood, I did not trust my therapist. I, I was just all the time paranoid. What are they going to tell my mom? I know it's confidential, but you know, 
you know, I, I'll say to them, hey, look, this isn't working. And then they just kind of reword it and rejig it and give me right. the exact same thing. I'm like, I, I don't need these 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 things in place that 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 help regulate me. I, I know them. I can remember. I know what to do. Right. I just, you know, there's aspects to me that I don't understand. And mm. I, I just feel depressed because I feel depressed and I feel anxious because I'm I'm anxious and right. that that was the kind of mentality that I had with it for for quite a while and so you know I, I started off being very open I didn't feel like they took me seriously because mm-hmm. you know with the alexithymia and yeah. lack of indirect communication they didn't really take it that seriously even though I was saying some really like heavy stuff and so I just kind of tape it off and because I was already in that system and I was a risk to myself they kept me in the system so it was just kind of like oh every week I've got to go there and just kind of talk to them and just Mm -hmm. listen to what they have to say and not really import much and that's how it went for a lot of the time during during teenagehood it wasn't a very like you know as as Megan would say that like co-regulating like Mm -hmm. I didn't really feel like they were on my level like they they understood me yeah, like oh, the yeah. the hierarchy, right? Like I'm yeah. the professional, you're the client. I know what's best. You don't mm-hmm. know anything. <laughs> like if if that's like the approach, like you're already build you you're creating a foundation built on distrust. And if you don't have trust in a relationship, in the world, in anything, you you really don't have anything. Like trust, I believe, is the basis for life, for freedom mm-hmm. of any mm-hmm. kind, for positivity of any kind. That's why it's it's that whole stereotype of like, oh, what, you don't trust me in relationships? Like, that's the red flag, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, I love to hear your story too because uh, I feel like we talked about so much today and we could talk for hours and hours. But, but yeah. 